Hey guys, welcome back to Safe Travel RV. I'm Big Al. Well, the day has finally come where we can upgrade this uh, radio that came with our 2018 Forest River Forester built on the E450 chassis. Uh, we do not like this radio. It's not user friendly. We've had a lot of trouble with the uh, cameras on it. I thought it might be this uh, AV switching box down here. I replaced it and it still didn't correct the problem. The camera just goes in and out intermittently, especially when you hit a bump. So I don't know if there's a loose connection somewhere, but I'm gonna check all that. We're gonna get this radio out and we're gonna replace it with this really nice Kenwood DMX 957XR. There's no DVR in it. It does have HD radio. You can add a Cirrus if you want to. It's uh, very user friendly. It has a uh, Apple CarPlay for our two iPhones. We can use them simultaneously and have them hooked to the radio wirelessly. So it's got also enough amp to drive, I'm sorry, enough power to drive my speakers that I upgraded a while back. So I'm anxious to get this out, but Crutchfield is excellent with their tech support. They give you this, uh, guide here on how to remove everything and how to install your radio and their tech support is awesome they are not paying me a penny to do this video i just love crutchfield and i would definitely start there when i'm looking for an upgrade on my radio so the biggest issue is getting this uh dash panel off this wood grain piece right here that goes all the way across make sure it's warm you don't want a freezing plastic and you're trying to pop off by hand try it with your hands first you just go up underneath the edge and just pop it loose like i did i went all the way across and gently released it all the way down now you can see it's completely loose the problem is i got to drop that steering wheel and that's what i'm going to do next i was going to see if i could get it off without dropping the steering wheel but there's a good chance that I could break this piece and I bet it's very expensive. So I'm gonna get this steering wheel down and then I'm gonna pop this panel off and show you what we have behind it. Okay, we got that dash trim panel out of there. Uh, on the steering wheel, I'll give you a little big out tip. All you gotta do is remove the bolts off of these two front ones and just loosen the back ones about three or four turns and then you can just lower that steering wheel down just enough to get that panel off and just rest it on the driver's seat until you're ready to reassemble. Your climate control cluster is held on to the back of the uh, trim panel with these three screws right here. You need a really short screwdriver to wiggle back in there to release those three screws before you can completely remove that trim panel. All right, with that being done, we're gonna uh, pop this radio out and identify our wiring and get ready to put in the new radio. Okay, so while I have my dash off, it's a great time to kind of upgrade this unit. Uh, Ford has installed a knockout plug right here that I'm going to add this double stack USB connector. The top one is gonna be for my iPhone. The bottom one's gonna be for Android or for another charging port. And over here, uh, none of this worked. This was a blank. And this was a USB input that I thought would go to my radio so we could play uh, music off a of flash drive, but it never worked. So all of this is coming out completely. And while I'm in the dash here, I'm just gonna go ahead and upgrade this to a little charging station for two USB inputs and then with the switch to turn it on and off. On this radio, you're gonna need 12 volt uh, accessory power supply. So to get that, if you notice when you pull this out, there is a multi-pin connector that rests right in here. As you can see, you just look for that white wire and that is a 12 volt switched power source. That yellow one you see right there is for a constant 12 volts. So you have all the power you need right here next to your radio. So that's gonna be a nice little tip for you. And if you notice, uh, somebody's gonna ask, what's all the blue tape on your dash for? Well, under each one of those is where my connectors are going to snap back onto the dash so I can push right down on the top of that and not risk cracking this big expensive piece of trim. So my next step is to uh, install this front camera and run the wiring back in through the firewall and up to the head unit. So I did a lot of research looking on of course YouTube trying to find a way to get into the firewall to the other side and nothing that I found 
looked easy or helpful, but I did find a way in, and this is where it is. I'm going to show you. Right over here on the right side, down in the fender well, that's where this little searching wire is going, right down through there. You just push it down through there, come around to this side, and I'm going to open this door up just a little bit. And I don't know if you can see it, but right in there is a rubber plug. All right. And that rubber plug is right there on that side. And it goes all the way across here. The access is right there. So after temporarily hooking up my front facing camera, I decided that the best place to install it is going to be right here. So in order to do that easily, this whole grill just needs to come out. It's just held in by these little clips right here. So it'll be real easy to just pop out, just take that center section out, and then the rest of the clip comes out. There's one bolt right here. And then that whole unit will just tilt forward and you can reach down behind there with a long screwdriver and release those bottom clips and then everything comes out as a unit. Okay, as you can see, I've got the grill off and in the garage and I'm just gonna show you the little bracket I had to make to get that uh, camera dead center on the front of this grill. So we're just gonna lay this down and looking down from the top, you can see right here that there's really no good place to mount that dead center. So what I did, I just took a piece of aluminum, a little scrap piece of aluminum, and then I just made this little bracket right here. And that's gonna go in just like that. And then I'm just gonna epoxy it to these two tabs right here. So that's gonna make a nice strong connection. And I also uh, did it to bring that camera head forward of the grill a little bit just so that grill won't show up in the picture. I didn't, I didn't want the leading edge of that grill to block anything in the picture. So that's going to allow me just to bring that camera a little bit further out and you'll see how that looks once I get all this assembled. Okay, this is how it looks all installed. We just got clamps on that bracket holding it to the plastic until that epoxy sets. So I think that's going to be great for this front facing camera. And folks, I got to highly recommend the long setting uh, JB Well epoxy, the four to six hour. It just makes for a super, super bond. It has never failed me. And you just have to be patient. We're going to let this thing sit overnight and start working on something else. Okay, guys, we are all done here. Everything's uh, back installed. This is a view of our front cam. I love it. It's going to be very nice for those tight parking places and those narrow camping spots. So that's all done. And as you can see right down here, this is our input for our iPhone. This one can be for the Android or a flash drive. And over here, we have a charging station. Uh, right now, this one right here is going to my dash cam, which is right there. And then those numbers you see are actually the voltage of my chassis battery, which is nice to monitor. Since this is always hot, we can just turn this on and off. That also turns on the dash cam, okay? So that's it, folks. I hope this helps. I hope you like the upgrades. I know we're going to love that front camera. And until next time, safe travel. <laughs>